YouTube. What's going on? It's your boy Buddha back in the building for another Last Claudia news and information video. Don't mind the glasses. They're just uh, here to make your boy Buddha look a little more presentable. But uh, we have to talk about some stuff, some information that we were given this morning. Mia is the newest character to drop in Last Cloud. And you might be asking yourself, who? I know uh, a lot of us probably have no idea who this girl is or was beforehand. Uh, however, I did see in the community after I did my speculation video and there was more discussion that Mia's name did come up, and shout out to Calphanite and some other members of the community. I think Advent, uh, I know in the main Discord, talked about it. Brought her name up and showed that if you paid close enough attention to the unit teaser, she had the same pendant that we all thought was similar to DeGrogues. Well, it was the exact same as the pendant that can be found on Zykes's unit portrait, along with the, like, little armpit pendants that she also has match up with him and as we're gonna see they were in a little band together and she has been mentioned before multiple times by Zykes so if you had your true Elsie Lord detective cap on you may have known who she was but I have a feeling we're gonna know a lot more about who she is with this update coming tomorrow so without further ado let's see what she's bringing to the table so the Phantom Crows is a band that Zykes was a part of, I guess, before the Silver Society or maybe during the Silver Society. I guess we'll, th those are details we'll have to find out. But there she is, Mia, coming in, sword wielder, surprise, surprise. She's got Thunderlight Flash's 10 hitter, White Standard is a 15 hitter, and Null Rending whatever is a 20 hitter, but I'm just going to pause the video. If you notice, there there were like two hits that were happening at the end of those combos. And it ties into something we'll find in her trait. So those weren't the actual hit counts that are going to be uh, forever, I would say. They are going to vary, I think. Her special is a nice, like, what is that, 60 hitter? Quite a lot of hits for a special, but it is single target. We have her traits. The first one is Tonitruate. Tonitruate. When using skill 2, give unit Electrify buff. That gets up to level 3. Stack buff level to boost attack stats. So, at level 1, you got 10% damage and 2,000 cap. Level 2, 20% and 4,000 cap. And level 3 is 40% and 8,000 cap. And that is universal thunder damage. So it'll apply to her physical attacks, special, all of the above. And magic damage taken minus 50%. I think that's only tied to level 3. So she doesn't have any magic mitigation prior to level 3. All right. Interesting how this stacks on a certain skill. So basically you'll want to charge up her S2, use it three times, and then start using your other skills, from what I'm understanding. Her skill, or her trait two is Guided Bolt. When physically attacking, chance to give enemy the Lightning Rod debuff, which gives an enemy thunder resistance minus 20 and boost chance to faint slash break plus 50%. Now, we know that that's an additive multiplier, so it's not quite super effective as it may seem. However, we will definitely take a built-in thunder res decrease Love, 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 love to see that. Nullify effect when giving another enemy lightning rod. So this is like uh, Shift Medine's lock on where you can only give it to one enemy at a time. And when you switch targets, you have a chance to swap that debuff to another enemy. When using skills, hit an enemy that has the lightning rod debuff with a powerful thunderbolt. When this thunderbolt activates, chance to cut electrify buff level by one. So... This is what we saw in those skill animations with those extra two hits and that little lightning bolt that comes out of the sky. That is all related to this guided bolt trait here. Crazy, because it also has a chance to take away a level from her trait one. So it's like you have to be on top of maintaining this level three, which means you're going to need a bunch of skill stock twos and need to pay attention to when you're losing those levels based on this second trait. So... 
quite interesting, definitely all over the place, but um, okay, let's move on. She's also not locked to single wield as we see in those damage cap raises, so keep that in mind. Uh, Mia's ability, skill one, thunder light flash, charge and deal a frontal medium area thunder combo attack. Skill two is white standard wide area thunder combo attack around unit. So uh, what this seems to me, this skill two is similar to like Granados's skill two, uh, where it's going to be a damaging AOE around Mia. Uh, where, wherever she's standing and uh, it makes sense because it's kind of like charging her up as her trait one specifies skill three null rending flower instantly close the gap for a medium area thunder combo attack that pushes enemies love that little clarification there so we don't have any more shift millum cases her special ex exquisite thunder stroke powerful thunder combo attack to one enemy and that final hit damage cap plus a hundred k so We'll have to see what her damage can look like. She doesn't have anything like true dual wield, right? She is a single wield unit based on the portrait, and I don't think in her skills she has it, so uh, we're not getting any super boosts to her special damage. And the meat, y'all know, the skill board. We have back to the wall. Frontal attack damage plus 30% and rear attack damage minus 10%. I mean, interesting, it, it may, I guess it lore-wise, she's taking enemies head, head to head, but I mean, if you're using backstab and surprise attack, you have 70% rather than an 80% damage increase. Bolt God's Blade, sword equipped, thunder damage plus 30%, and damage cap plus 3,000 will definitely take. Plasma Pierce, physical damage plus 100% to guarding enemies. Uh, interesting, because guard lowers damage by a ton, so... I think I'd much prefer some kind of interruption, similar to how we had with Bayland, where he has the guard break or whatever. Uh, but we'll see how this affects her damage. Roll of Thunder. When the trait Guided Bolt's Thunderbolt activates, use 2% of MP to boost the Thunderbolt damage. So with those extra two hits, she has a kind of sharp eyes effect where this Roll of Thunder will use MP to help increase that thunderbolt's damage to reach cap again we don't know if that thunderbolt scales off of like physical modifiers or damage modifiers in general i imagine it's going to be its own unique type of damage based on this however we'll have to see with the data mine and through testing uh, cross drive damage plus 40 percent to physically attacking enemies this is really fascinating uh, because it's universal damage 40 percent is a huge modifier and I'm assuming it's kind of like activating, you know how Roland has his super armor and when he's in the middle of an animation, whether it be skill or magic, he takes 50% less damage. I imagine if an enemy is in the middle of a physical attack, that's when this cross drive procs. So quite interesting, very interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of words that get me intrigued for how she's going to do in arena but we'll have to see silver lining at max hp skill damage plus 20 percent will definitely take that i love that we're used to like pride and moonlight where at max hp you get a stat increase but i'm a much bigger fan of damage modifier so love that skill and then for ones that we already know flying shadow illusion blessed speed skill charge two Quick Trigger, Auto Haste, Attack Up Max, Heroism Up 2, Critical Up 3, Proud Force, Royal Armor, Auto Protection, Human Shield, Sky High 2, Piercing, Thunder Drive, Thunder Attack Raise 2, Thunder Attack Raise 3, Thunder Enhance, Sword High Boost, Sword Mega Boost, Ultimate Boost 3, Human Slayer, Goddess Kiss, and Indomitable Spirit. So, quite a nice skill board, great SC saves. And I think she's going to be pretty easy to build things that you'll have to put on her. Like I said, her damage caps are not li linked to single wield, so definitely will want dual wield. Uh, you definitely want special boost to boost those human slayer damage mods. Very, very cool unit. Very, I'm, I'm excited. We haven't had a nice thunder uh, attacker in a very long time, so nice that we're finally getting something on the board. And the SSR arc that Mia is bringing to the table is the Phantom Crows. This is really interesting. 
Um, the Arc Trace. Sword equipped. Physical attack damage plus 20%. Love it. Battle Start. Chance to give all enemies blind. Also very interesting. Boost STR based on number of incapacitated allies up to 60% which is looking like, what, 20% per ally. So that's quite a large jump, right? We talk about how stats are pretty negligible, but when you're talking about 50% and higher increases, I'd say even the 35% and higher increases, that's when stat boosts can get pretty significant. So being able to get 60% STR is definitely intriguing. Uh, learnable skills also caught my eye. We have Wrath. When an ally is incapacitated, give unit Rage, which I believe gives a boost to STR uh, and decreases another stat, maybe defense. Aaron starts out with Rage, and I can never remember exactly what it does. You can't use magic spells while you have it, but interesting that we can now inflict our units with it manually with this skill. One Blade Breaker, when only one weapon is equipped, greatly boost physical attack break. This is extremely intriguing because part of the reason we know dual wield is so much more effective than single wield is because of all of the behind the scenes benefits it gives you that you wouldn't really know unless someone tells you. One of them being a times two modifier to your break damage, right? The invisible damage that units have uh, when you are breaking a boss. Whenever you're dual wielding, you're literally doubling that because you're doubling the hits. If this skill is giving like a times two multiplier rather than a plus percentage additive mod, it's going to be an extremely sought after skill uh, and I think is going to make a lot of the community very, very interested. Fast Grand Brave is an awesome skill to see. I just talked about how 35% uh, increases to things and higher is pretty noticeable. And at Battle Start, auto-casting Grand Brave. Of course, that's going to be a 40-second temporary buff, but that's plus 35% to your STR. Uh, then it has also Backstab, Blind Research, and Auto Critical. So I really, really like this arc for everything so far. The trait seems like it can have some use, the chance to give blind, and then that monster 60% potential increase to STR. The learnable skills are looking really, really interesting and could go one of two ways, especially with that one blade breaker uh, being up in the air for what it actually provides. So uh, let's take a look at the AR. Oh, before I even move on, can we also talk about how dope this freaking artwork is and how we now have an entire cast of units that I'm sure myself and many, many others uh, would love to have in the game based on those designs. Here is the AER Phantom Crow Ruby. It is an accessory six star. The trait is cut damage taken 7% per incapacitated ally. Stats HP 250, MP 30, defense 28, and MND 61. No attribute or ailment resistances. However, cutting damage 7% per incapacitated ally. Uh, so you're telling me at three incapacitated allies, you're getting 21% damage uh, cut, throw this on your tank in arena. My good God, is they are they never going to die. This is just one of those things that they're going to provide us, and it's going to give tanks an even more toxic way to mitigate damage. But very exciting if you get it and you're able to take advantage of it. Last Claudia, Mia arrives in Last Claudia. Notice that it does not say Descent of Heroes. So uh, as we will see in the news maintenance notice, she is a permanent pool unit, uh, which lines up with what we predicted yesterday. Uh, we're getting that story update and a permanent unit basically swapped with the collab time slot of last year. How we had the collab in uh, July and the story update in June last year basically just flipping those for 2022 it seems so i'm excited i'm going to make a separate video for the maintenance notice going over those details but i'm excited to see what you guys think uh, i'm sure there's a bunch of criticism to be made here of course another freaking sword unit is uh, just kind of taboo at this point in lc um but it is a thunder style attacker we haven't had one of those nice to see we're gonna have like a fast paced 
hopefully decent damage dealer. Look out for the maintenance notice video. I'm going to keep the sunglasses on until today is over. And I want to see what you guys think in the comments below. Like, subscribe, bell notifications, and turn on all noties if you're new to the channel. New to the Buddha gang, you won't miss a video when I post it. And all that being said, y'all know what we say. Work hard, play hard. See you in the next video.